Amen. Amen. The power of spirituality for your desire turn around. Spirituality sets the pace for all round blessing, material, physical, family, and whatever you can think of. The more spiritual you are, the more prosperous you become. The more spiritual you are, the more authority you exercise. The more spiritual you are, the more dominion you command. So, carnality is a risk. In fact, you can't serve God and serve him well if you are carnal. What God expects from us is spiritual stewardship. Romans chapter 12, let's read it from verse 1. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So your service can never be reasonable if you are not spiritual. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Carnality is a risk. Spirituality sets the pace. For your reward in service. If you must serve in this kingdom and be blessed in this kingdom, you must align yourself to the rules that makes for reward. Who you serve determines who pays you. But before your pay is delivered to you, there are conditions you must fulfill. Just like you getting employed to a company or to an organization, they give you terms of reference to your job. They give you terms of reference. These are the things that are expected of you. These are the boundaries you must not cross. I like you to know this. You don't need spirituality to be rich. But you need to be spiritual to be blessed. To be blessed is superior than to be rich. Because the blessing covers every aspect of life, including money. You don't need to be spiritual to be rich. But you need spirituality to be blessed. And what God said, you shall serve, I shall bless. So service that must be profitable, rewardable, enrichable, must have the baseline called spirituality. Romans chapter 8, let's take it from verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse 6 now. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Carnally minded.
you can be a believer and be carnally minded. And once you are carnally minded, you do things in response to flesh. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. Let's take it from verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh is an enemy to our blessing. Verse 17, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Look at verse 18 now. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. The flesh want to lead you. The flesh want to control you. The flesh want to manipulate you. you hear me? The flesh is a killer to spirituality. It's a passion quencher. The flesh can quench your passion. The flesh can quench your zeal. Why is it quenching it? It doesn't want you to be blessed. You can think canal, talk canal, act canal. Do you know where you're heading to? Dryness. You will be dry of blessing, dry of favor, dry of grace, dry of the help of God, also dry of the power of God. This is the type Apostle Paul said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. If you don't have a good base, you can't gain a great height. Spirituality gives us a good base. If you don't have a good base, you can't gain a great height. I felt pity for a young man in the ministry, full-time ministry. Well, I won't really blame him. Why? Because um, he didn't have anyone that said, Stop there! Uh, you know, church, one thing I've discovered with church member, if you tell them, Stop there! Waiting. Waiting. Now, waiting. My church are come <laughs> Now, nobody has been telling him, Stop there. Don't do this. Hey, come back. Before you know what's happening, he has turned haywire. Just like, um, can we be in prayer now? You'll be in the office. No talk. Is it possible? Is it possible that we'll be in prayer? Pastor will be in the office. You will have another ministry. Can we be in church now and you travel to Abuja? That will let you know that if no one is guiding you, you will mess up full time. And that's how this young man has messed and messed and messed now. He now felt that he scored. He now felt he scored. He now carried some choir members. I don't know why choirs, they are always first victim. <laughs> carry some choir members, carry some uh, um, ushers. CCU. To go and start church. I know the pattern. They will escort you and come back. <laughs> Write it down as so. They will escort you and come back. When what they are looking for cannot be found, they will come back. Do you know why this error took place? Lack of spirituality. You can't be spiritual and not be sensitive. The two go together. You cannot be spiritual and lack sensitivity. My sheep hear it, my voice. The voice of a stranger they will not follow. 
you can't be spiritual and not be sensitive. If you are spiritual and you are not sensitive, then something is wrong with your spirituality. Jesus said, I do nothing except I hear. Spirituality helps us to become like God. What is spirituality? Having an affinity for God. Increasing your passion. <laughs> David said, one thing have I desired, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And to inquire in his temple. So spirituality is having a strong affinity. Increasing in your longing, in your passion for God. Oh Lord, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul longed for thee. My flesh tested after thee to see thy power. So as you are increasing your affinity for God, you are growing in grace. Growing in favor. Becoming like God. More fruitful like God. That is why, hear this. Every one of us, if you don't upgrade spiritually, you can never amount to anything good currently. If you don't upgrade spiritually. You will now be among those that we used to now. We used to. We are the ones that started this church now. When we were in the other side. Come and see prayer now. <laughs> now they are not praying now. That time we are doing dry fasting. Now which kind of fasting are you doing? Wet fasting. <laughs> Tell your neighbor upgrade. Our spirituality requires an upgrading. As you upgrade spiritually, your blessings level also upgrade with you. The part of the jaws, Proverbs 4, 18, is as the shining light that shines more and more onto a perfect day. So as you are upgrading spiritually, blessings are flowing regularly. Your channels are never dry. Rather, your channels are increasing. You can't be growing up spiritually and your channels of blessing remain one. Now lie, it must increase. It must increase. Your opportunities increase. Your helpers multiplied. Don't play with your spirituality. That is the base that makes your service to God productive. Your spirituality determines your prosperity base. Job 22, let's take it from verse 21. It determines your prosperity base. It also determines your power base. Everything in this kingdom requires power. Acquaint now thyself with him. And be at peace. Thereby, good, say with me, good, shall come unto thee. There are people that are pursuing good. There are people that good is pursuing. The kind that scripture says, goodness and mercy shall follow thee. Goodness and mercy. Anywhere you go, goodness, I'm going with you. Anywhere you go, goodness, say, I cannot leave you alone. Acquaint now thyself and be at peace. Thereby, good shall come unto thee. Shall come. So good can come. I say good can come. Amen. Now do you know what? As you upgrade spiritually, you become a magnetor of good. You attract good. 
It is what is in you that attract the things that flow to you. Verse 22. Verse 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his word in thy heart. 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Verse 25 now. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of what? If you put away iniquity, iniquity is the enemy of spirituality. That's the reason why the enemy wants you to go Kana. So that you can be growing in iniquity instead of growing in spirituality. If you put away iniquity from thy tabernacle, what is thy tabernacle? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. <laughs> so there is a place in your heart that God is supposed to dwell. If you put it away, You can be in church now and be nursing evil. God is saying to you, put it away. If you want me to bless you. You can be in church and be imagining evil. God is saying, if you want me to bless you, put it away. God's servant Bishop Abiyo said, some people suffer not because of the sins they committed but because of the instruction that they refuse to keep. When you put it away, you attract another thing. So being spiritual does not reduce your chance of prospering but rather it increases your chance. Being spiritual does not reduce your chance of going forward. I don't know the kind of understanding you have about being spiritual. But I want your mind to be reoriented. Because being spiritual gives you the opportunity for God to make a way for you. It's how we go before thee and make the crooked places straight. And we break in pieces the gate of brass and we cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will open before thee the two leaf gates, and thy gate shall not be shut. Cannot be shut. It cannot. I say it cannot. So being spiritual does not reduce you, but rather it increases you. It increases you. You can't be spiritual and lack spiritual understanding. Because the understanding you possess per time determines the events, your experience per time. So people that pursue spirituality, they command authority, material abundance, and every other thing that you can think of. Do not be deceived, Galatians 6 from verse 7. He said, God is not mock. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. That shall he also reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So spirituality requires you to sow to the spirit. Sowing to the spirit is upgrading your spirit. Enhancing, enabling, 
strengthening your spirit. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. So if your soul is not prospering with spiritual things, your body can't prosper. If your soul is not prospering with spiritual things, you can't attract material blessing. You can't attract open doors. You can't even attract success. The question you should ask yourself now, what is my mind prospering in? What is prospering in your mind now? What is prospering in your mind? Because what occupies your mind 90 or 80 percent determine the direction and your experience. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart. So you need spirituality to become the things that God has ordained for you. If you lack spirituality, you can't assess your inheritance. You can't assess the treasures of blessing. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Now as he entered into the heart of man, what God has prepared for them that love him. There are things prepared, but you need to be spiritual to assess them. Carnality is only a pathway to growing hardship. You can, be, you can be in church and be suffering. The reason why you are suffering is not that God brought you here to suffer. Are you what I'm saying now? Because scripture says he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son Jesus Christ. So, your being here is a guarantee that things must turn around for you. No wonder Papa said you are not born again to suffer again. No. It's an insult on redemption. It's a mockery on your new birth. That you are born again and you are suffering again is a lie. Go and find out. There is something that you are missing or there is something that you have not known. When you know it, things will begin to turn. Carnality is a pathway to growing hardship, growing suffering, <laughs> growing affliction. So if you are not spiritual, you can't hear God, you can't respond to God's instruction, you can't obey God. Abraham's blessings we are spiritually oriented because he has conditioned his mind to obey God. The reason why there are different levels of blessings in every individual you meet in church is because not everyone is willing to be spiritual. Many choose the instruction they keep. They choose the instruction they will obey. There's no problem with that. Scripture even said it. If they obey. So there are people that must disobey. Job 36, 11, If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they obey. If they obey and serve me. There are people that will always choose. And you know, God does not infringe on our choice. That is why he threw it open. We are going to read it, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15, and verse 19. Let's read it. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his status, and his judgment that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess. Look at this. I said verse 15. Did they hear where? See, I have set before thee this day 
life and good and death and evil. Let's go now to verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and causes. Choose, therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Choose. Tell your neighbor, choose. And amazingly, every one of us here, we are products of our choice. You are a product of your choice. Nobody forced anything on you. You choose. You are a product of your choice. But hear me, what people fail to understand, any choice you make goes with a consequence. You can't make a choice for a thing and not embrace the consequence. The consequence can be positive or it can be negative. But you, once you make a choice for a thing, you must also go with the other thing. So you don't make a choice and abandon the other one. No, the two goes together. Every choice has a consequence. Every choice has a consequence. That's why I say choose, oh. Because whatever you choose, I remember a sister got married. So one day she brought a complaint that uh, the husband is snoring. <laughs> so my pastor laughed. Didn't he tell you that he was snoring? The only thing you saw is that he's working in the bank. He has a good car. <laughs> Every day you see him on tie. Now you have untied the tie. <laughs> so you are now seeing snoring. You don't know that you married everything together. <laughs> it's part of it now. You marry everything together. I might say something to somebody. One say, I can't sleep with my husband in the same room. Oh. Anytime you see, he will be kicking me. <laughs> As if he's playing football. <laughs> it's okay. If he's always kicking you, take the position where his leg will not touch you. He said, No, he can do back kick. <laughs> Praise God. Why I'm telling you this is because it's part of the choice you made. You didn't, that, you didn't see that side of the choice. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh, it's everything now. So you collected everything. You know, wedding day won't show you that one. Don't forget I told you love is blind, but marriage will open your eye. <laughs> so when you enter you will see the other side praise God so any choice you make has its own consequence am I saying the truth so you are a product of your choice now should I tell you this if you don't like what you are experiencing you can change your choice I didn't say you should go and divorce your husband no So the more spiritual you are, the more you assess the blessings that goes with service. So spirituality increases blessing. It increases blessing. You shall serve, I shall bless. 
You shall serve. I shall bless. I say, by myself, have I sworn? Ah, I love this God. He's too faithful. He's too faithful. He's too faithful. You shall serve. I shall bless. By myself, have I sworn? In blessing, I will bless you. The blessings of God does not have a reverse gear. You are the only one that can reverse it. When you begin to dwindle in your commitment, in your service, as if you are doing God a favor, you and God, who needs help? No, say the truth. You and God, who needs help? He said, I am the Lord, I change it not. But you are the one that needs change, not EPCO. The deeper you grow spiritually, the more blessings are commanded to you. Blessings are commanded. Blessings are commanded. Spirituality commands blessing. It commands favor. It commands open door. Spirituality paralyzes satanic oppression. Hear me? Evil forces, they advise themselves the fire at that place is too hot. Don't go there. People that went, they didn't come back. It's just like that, brother Zachariah. If they told his uncle that something can kill him, he would never agree. He came as a snake to strike. But unfortunately, that was the last time the snake will ever go. Anyone that have told you the same thing, that you will not amount to anything, today, noiseless breakthrough, we cut them off. If you are saying amen, say better amen. When God kills, no arrest. No police arrest. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Mm -hmm. Do you want to see an increased blessing in your life? Toe the line of spirituality. Toe the line of spirituality. I know that the moment you make a choice to be spiritual, some people will be offended in you. Natural. I rather miss you than miss God. Because if you miss God, you will miss good. I rather lose you than to lose God. Any person that is not helping you to grow carnally is a witchcraft sent to your destiny. Is a witchcraft sent to deliver you. That's why you hear it. This, this, uh, this your spirit don't they become too much, oh? Don't they become too much? The reason why it's becoming too much is so that they will leave you alone. So that they will leave you alone. Anyone that is not comfortable with your spirituality, I bet you they will be angry and they will leave you. They will leave you. But if you don't value your spirituality, you will quench it and follow them. You will quench it. You will quench it. Check it. The people that are coming around you now, two things. Either they are enhancing your spirituality or they are fueling your passion for carnality. You can't miss the two. You can't miss the two. That is where your sensitivity is needed to know when an enemy is around. Is it by force to be my friend? Abba. Do you know how many friends I've lost before I reach where I am now? Thank God they didn't follow me to reach here. I won't escort you to heaven and I won't escort you to hell. You make your choice for the one you want to enter. You either follow them that are following and pursuing God or you follow them that are pursuing devil. That's why your spirituality is a choice. It's not a must. 
choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. Everybody must make his choice. You must make your choice. What do I need to do to walk, to grow in spirituality? Number one is to walk in the fear of God. Walk in the fear of God. God told Abraham, walk thou before me and be thou perfect and I shall be the exceeding great reward. A steward is the one that serves the interest of his master. If you don't delight in your master, you will do it anyhow. A steward is one that serves the interest of his master. You serve the interest of your master. And for you to serve the interest of your master, you must have reverence. You must have godly fear. There are things that you know that your master don't like, so you don't do them. Because doing them, you are quenching your trust and the confidence he has in you. You are killing it. So you must make up your mind to walk. Can two walk together except they be agreed? No. It must three and verse three. Two cannot walk together except they be agreed. So if we are walking together and it's because we agree. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Number two. You must give God what we call delightsome worship. Scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall grant you your heart desire. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. This is another version. So when you delight yourself in the Lord, you are not looking for things. Things will be looking for you. Now hear this. It is your spirituality that increases your delight because your soul is already burning with passion. Your soul is already burning with passion. You are not looking for things, but you can't miss things. You are not looking for things, but things will always look for you. Number three, how do you increase or grow in spiritual things? You must be a lover of the word, always excited at thy word, at his word. He said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and they became to me the joy and rejoicing of my soul. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. I should be in Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15, verse, I think it should be verse 16. No, no. Is it 316 or? Eh? 1516. Okay. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy words were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, the Lord God of hosts. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Anytime you begin to lose taste, lose passion for the word, check it. Your spirituality is, uh, is under attack. No wonder scripture said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Don't let it depart. If you let it depart, something will leave you. This book of the law, thy words were found. There was we are found. Now, do you know what? If you don't force yourself to go to the world, the world will not come to you. The world will not come to you. 
You can claim now that your Bible is in your phone. How many times have you opened that Bible in your phone? How many times have we opened that Bible in our phone or the Bible in your iPad? My Bible is in my iPad. I have my Bible in my iPad. If there is no passion for the world, now hear me. Let me shock you now. Some people can store pornography in their phone and be hiding to be reading it. They watch it. Oh, this one. You'll be hiding, hiding to be viewing it. But you cannot open the Bible in your phone. But every, every day, every day, every day, once there's nobody around, you'll be nodding your head like a gamma lizard. But you cannot open the Bible in your phone. Before you know what's happening, you are growing in addiction. The addiction is growing stronger, 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 stronger. And lastly, you must make your choice for obedience. If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure. Obedience is one thing that the devil cannot contest in your life the moment your mind is made up. Obedience is the backbreaker. It breaks the siege. It breaks the hold. Once your mind is made up to be obedient to a particular thing, I want to let you know the enemy will give up on you. If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure. Once you make a choice to be obedient, you don't announce it. You just quietly do it. Papa said, you don't need to make noise to make news. Once you are obedient over a particular thing, you trigger. Life responds to action and reaction. To every action, there is equal and opposite what? Reaction. So, obedience is one of the silent platform for noiseless breakthrough. Noiseless breakthrough. Noiseless breakthrough. Noiseless breakthrough. One of my pastors called me. I was here on Wednesday. He said, I did something, you know, and it has triggered something. You know. I said, what did you do? <laughs> By the time I say, I say, good, it means that you are that you have understood this thing. It has opened another major breakthrough for his life, for his career, for his family. Now, should I tell you something? What will change your life does not need announcement. All you just need to do, use your sense, do it. And watch out for the response. Use your sense. What will change your life does not need announcement. One simple obedience is enough to wipe out sweat from your life. One obedience. You can have revelation and not be obedient. Yes. And you cannot locate an instruction and not respond to obedience. You can have revelation and not be obedient. Let me say this. 
Noiseless breakthrough is not a function of muscle. In fact, it does not require effort. That word breakthrough connotes a resistance is in view. Breakthrough. There must be something that must be broken for you to go through. There is a resistance. But if there is anything you need to confront any confrontation for your breakthrough to become a reality without you making noise or exercising muscle, all you just need to do, speak the word. Tell your neighbor, speak the word. As a child of God, you are not permitted to break down, but only to record breakthrough. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the souls and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. The word is quick and powerful. It's not my word like hammer and like fire that breaketh the rocks. Now hear me. As far as breakthrough is concerned, we are confronted more spiritually than physically. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down every imagination. And everything that has exalted itself above the knowledge of God. So if you know that you are confronted more spiritually than physical, what you need to engage for the breakthrough to become a reality, speak the word. Jesus said, these words that I speak, they are spirits and they are life. Speak the word. Tell your neighbor, speak the word. If you lack the word, you will lack the wonders of God. God has no power outside his word. No wonder I said in Psalm 81, reading from verse 10 down, he said, if they had hacking unto my word, I would have long subdued their enemies. I would have long subdued their enemies. I would have long crushed the barriers to their breakthrough. Breakthrough does not require physical fights. It only requires word confrontation. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Because wherever the word appears, God must appear. That's why I say speak my word and watch me go to act for you. Wherever the word goes, God goes. And God cannot go and someone say, no, you know, go pass here. They put no entrance. Can't you see it? God, are you not seeing? No thoroughfare. The Lord of hosts has proposed. And who shall disannul? His hand is stretched out. And no one can turn it back. If you don't clear, you will be cleared. If you don't clear, you will be what? Cleared. So for noiseless breakthrough to become a reality in your life, tell your neighbor, speak the word. Speak the word and go and rest. You are not the performer. You are not the assistant doer. My only job here is to speak. The conformer go to work. Because I know he has been working before. All I just need to do is to be speaking. Stand on the road and be crushed. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. 
but it shall accomplish. Tell your neighbor, accomplish. That which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing we are to. I send it. It shall accomplish. It shall accomplish. Should I tell you this? For you to enter the realm of noiseless breakthrough, your mouth must not be word dry. Let there be light. And there was light. Everything God said, God saw. So wherever you are desiring noise, let's break through now. That does not require. Please pray for me. You please pray with me. Please help me. No. Lord, this is your word. This issue must bow. In the name of Jesus, this issue must bow. Lord, did you, this person said this, but according to your word, that is not your counsel for me. Lord, whoever is standing on the pathway to my blessing, I decree, let them be crushed. I say it, go to sleep. I'm not the fighter. He said, I'm a man of peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Are you what I'm saying now? If you want the God of war to fight your war, speak his word. It is your word that put him to war against your enemies. Noiseless breakthrough. Say with me, noiseless breakthrough. breakthrough. Jesus told Peter, Peter, let down your net for a catch. That catch means anything. What do you want to catch? For Peter, it was fish. Let down your net for the catch. As soon as they hear of me, they shall submit themselves and the stranger shall fade away. Let down your net for the catch. Peter said, Master, we have toiled all night and day and we have caught nothing. Nevertheless, are thy word. The fish is the head then they call us. And everyone was going. <laughs> Fish is nowhere trap is set. But this time they didn't know it's trap. Then they call us. <laughs> and everyone was entering. What scripture recorded was that he had a net breaking experience. Net breaking. For a net to break, you know what it means? Who has seen net before? Fishing net. Are you sure you have seen fishing nets before? Very strong. Whoa! Net break. Meaning that the quantity of fish that entered had the power to break the elasticity of that cord. So, the word can break any barrier. Noiseless. It, it was not trumpet. Fish! Then they call you! Let down your net for a catch. And immediately he dropped the net. Everyone started coming. I want to let you know, from today, your experience in life will be noiseless breakthrough. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say it better amen. Yeah. Do you know what? We'll focus more on that in the second service. Every time you speak the word, the spirit goes into operation. Scripture say oil was poured, but the spirit came. There are too many things we are struggling with. There are too many things we are struggling with. It's because we want to exercise muscle. But hear me. Put the word to work and speak the spirit of God. Work out your breakthrough. Put the word to work. Every time the word goes to work, the spirit takes over. The spirit takes over. The spirit takes over. I remember one sister that was to get married. Very dedicated and committed sister. One man within their family said that that marriage will not take place. She came crying because they dread the man. 
Do you know what? I say, what do you want? He say, that the, the marriage must take place. I say, come, open your hand, let me pray for you. I say, Father, whoever that man is, I say, I anoint this hand now, give that man spiritual accident. See how the accident take happen. He went and climbed by one tree. A week to the traditional wedding. He climbed by one tree, as he was coming down, he slipped one leg. He land with his back. He was on permanent bed rest. Traditional wedding finish. Wedding finish. She relocated to city. The man stayed there for bed. I pray for someone here. Whoever has made up their mind to fight your breakthrough, I decree spiritual accident for them. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Another sister had the same challenge and came back. I said, Sir, my own is like that sister's. Oh no, I need God's intervention. I said, Lord, duplicate the testimony, give that man a spiritual accident. Have you had that bicycle break somebody's leg before? Bicycle, 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 bicycle. Guess what? Bicycle break the leg. The leg got broken. So you know, get leg to go do the enchantment again. He was now on the village POP. You know, there's village POP. <laughs> the God of Erekbo will give your enemy village POP. You better say amen, no? Whoever has made up their mind to fight your breakthrough. God of your neighbor, give them spiritual accidents. Rise up to your feet right now. If you have your oil, bring it out. Bring it out. Noiseless breakthrough. There are breakthroughs that does not require fight. Just speak the word and release the oil. Re speak the word and release the oil. I won't forget one of my masters that I served. <laughs> he was pastoring in a particular place. One deacon troubled his life. Troubled his life. He gave him a bunch of trouble. Out of provocation. He came to the church and prayed one day. And released the oil to the air. If I am sent here, it is either I stay or he goes. The following day, the man died. All, his, all the people that were backing him up to fight the pastor came and knelt down and was confessing. I want to say to someone here now, whoever the devil has position to fight your breakthrough, the oil will lift up a standard against them. That amen is too weak for God. You are going to pray. Father, when you stretch your hand, no one can turn it back. Give me noiseless breakthrough in this service. By the anointing, break every invisible barrier to my change of story. Whatever look like a mysterious delay, whatever look like a mysterious manipulation to my open door, to my change of story, I place a demand on your hand by this anointing. Give me my desired breakthrough. Lirush <laughs> Reshambalayo denosisu nakata lemporo dinando lekotekete Lord I place a demand on your hand give me noiseless breakthrough in this church noiseless breakthrough concerning my family noiseless breakthrough whatever represents a hand of wickedness an operation of the enemy 
a gang up of evil men and evil women against my appointed breakthrough father i place a demand on your hand by this anointing give me noiseless breakthrough noiseless breakthrough noiseless breakthrough noiseless breakthrough noiseless breakthrough noiseless breakthrough le kotari ikikuna jesus i helopa pay to read the nakikato le shio ekolato mende kupre kiketolia reklo pekle itola zindera jekotelo rizonataka thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray for someone here and your noiseless breakthrough begins with your confession scripture says with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation your noiseless breakthrough begins with you accepting jesus and humiliating the devil wherever you are right now you want to make it right with god put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. And be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me, wherever you are, carry it. Just come out right now. Carry your bag and your Bible and come quickly. Put those hands together for Jesus. God bless you. God bless you inside and outside. Take that step right now. This is the best decision anyone can make. God bless you. Come, come, come. If you are coming, come right now. Hey, you.